but the biggest transition you need to make at a mindset level is it's no longer about you. It's now all about others. Good day, Tony. Welcome back. Hey, John. Thanks for having me on. Hey, I want to talk to you about that issue of a salesperson and typically a very successful salesperson suddenly having to move into a sales management role, a leadership role, leading a team. It's a tough transition for a lot of people to make, isn't it? It, it is. And it's, uh, it's so easy to succumb to the pressure and take the promotion. Um, I've moved from number one seller in my company, in my career, many times to be a sales manager and then ended up leaving the company because I thought I made more money as the star individual contributor and had a much simpler life. You become a manager, you're now get, getting paid at the average you know, of everybody else. So it's much harder to overachieve. And you just sort of live life in this sausage grinder you know, environment where you've got a lot of pressure from the leadership team above you and lots of excuses and inability to deliver under you. It's a tough role. I, I think sales management is the toughest role in any company. And management and leadership is totally different yeah. to selling in a lot of ways. So it's, it's, it's really, we've got to think differently. We've got to be different. Yeah. Uh, our life's going to be different. Uh, it, it's, it's a classic change and a real challenging one. So, so what is, what's some advice you've got for people going through that change? Well, let, let's talk about the elephant in the room with making the transition. If, if you move from being an individual contributor over to being a leader and manager, and, and John, you're right, leading and managing are two different things and you need to do both. But the biggest transition you need to make at a mindset level is it's no longer about you. It's now all about others. Um, being a manager and a leader is all about uh, servant leadership, you yep. know, as far as a model goes. Yeah, I, I like those words, servant yep. leadership. So, and, and getting uh, your mind around that is a classic change from being an individual correct. performer. Yeah, and, and it's also about moving away from, you know, the, the artistry of being a good seller into engineering process. Um, so you need to go from, from artist to engineer you need to go from being self-centric to being others-centric. Um, and the, the other thing that's critically important is when you get into that role, you need to learn to make the really tough decisions early. Otherwise, it'll be the end of you in your role as a manager. So deciding who, <clears throat> deciding who really belongs in your team and then making those tough decisions is important. Um, making sure you've got a good sales methodology and sales process is really key. And then making sure you're putting people in the right places and the right roles. Absolutely. Um, and then coaching, coaching, coaching is, is my experience. A lot of top sales managers, sales people, when they move to a sales management role, really struggle with coaching. They don't understand what coaching really is. They'll tell, they'll show but they won't coach. Well, a, lo a, lo a lot of them elbow their sales rope out of the way and say, let me get it done for you. Like they just jump in and rescue because, you know, they desperately need, need the revenue for their forecast. So um, there's a really good book I'd recommend. I'm just holding it here. So uh, Jason Jordan and Michelle Van Zella. Great book. Uh, Cracking the Sales Management Code. Um, you can see my bookshelf behind me. I've got probably 15 books on sales management. They're all very hard to read. They're like textbooks. This is the best book ever written on sales management. So if you're new into the role, uh, and Jason and Michelle make some really good points. And the biggest point they make is that you can't manage the result. You can only manage the activities that feed into the objectives that secure the result. And as an example of that, you can't just pull a lever for more revenue. To get more revenue, you need more qualified pipeline. To generate more qualified pipeline, you need to manage the, the daily activity of people committing to time block and doing the outbound. So you, you can manage them doing that and provide coaching. Uh, and that should feed into the objective of de-risking hitting the actual result. So just make sure you understand that. Otherwise, you'll have enormous stress. I've always found that stress comes from not feeling that you're in control, um, you know, rather than rather than the size of the goal. But 
you know, as a sales manager, there were plenty of times at the end of the quarter where I felt like I was aging a whole year of my life. And we all want to avoid that. We do indeed. Yeah. And think about people, process and performance management. Don't let people off the hook. If they're not making their number, then they sure as hell had better be working really hard and executing that work effectively. So those three things are just really critical. Or identify development issues and and help them develop their capability and and lift their game. Yeah, and and that's true. And you can can teach and coach and develop skills, but it's very hard to move the the needle on, on values and personality. So again, you you know you really need to make those those calls. Well, you need you need to be compassionate. You need to be inclusive. All of these things that are important, but having the wrong people in your team that will never make it. Let me give you one last big mistake. This I could go on for an hour with this, but let me give you one last big mistake to think about. Most managers wrongly focus on trying to lift the bottom to be the middle, yeah. and and the truth is, performance manage the bottom. They either sink sink or swim. I know this sounds brutal but put your energy into coaching and lifting the middle so they can be great and do it by using your very best people to do the coaching and inspire the rest of the team. And as you said earlier on, if those one, if they are drowning at the bottom, uh, let them go um, and move them out and go and find yeah. people to replace them. It's a much more simple and effective process than investing so much time and effort into those people, as you say, and not really investing the people that need your support that are that are your A and B players, uh, and let yeah you, know, you don't want them to flounder. They make them successful, and if the other ones can't swim, get them off the team. <laughs> and and it's true, John. I've got to do one last last thing, given that we raised that. <laughs> Before we manage those people out, we we need to use a mirror as the diagnostic tool and look at ourselves. <laughs> You know, have we do, have we done everything that we should be doing? Do they have a viable territory? Yeah. Um, have we provided clarity about ideal customer profile and buyer personas? Um, have we coached them around the narrative, right? So yeah. we need to make sure we've done all of the things that have earned the right. That's what I mean by development, and I totally yeah. agree with you on that, yeah, Tony. Right. But you made the point that uh, you, the values have to be right, the personality has been has to be right. It's very difficult to change the basic ingredients in a human being. It can be done, I know, but I don't believe that's a job of a sales manager. If if those ingredients aren't there in the first place, it's probably of no value to either the person or the sales manager to spend too much time on the effort. It's so true, John. If someone's just a lazy narcissist who isn't very smart, they just need to go. (laughs) Well, that's the extreme, but yes, I agree. Okay, that's a really good input, really good advice. If you're new, new, new to sales management out there, uh, hopefully this has been of great value to you. And I know Tony's got a lot more uh, content and a lot more thoughts on that subject. So go search it out. Good value, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, John. The new page-turning sales novel, The Wentworth Prospect. In the words of one reviewer, it's B2B sales mastery delivered in an ingenious, engaging and hugely entertaining way. Get it now at your favourite book retailer.